Hello, everyone, and welcome to the technical meeting of the third Lens Taekwondo Worldwide Sports Online Open 2021. I'm Lisa Lenz, and I'm the co-organizer of this event. I'm also the PR and media director. Together with us today, we have my sister, Edina Lenz, who is the referee chairman. Our partner, Mr. Kenneth Schinken from Worldwide Sports Online, could unfortunately not be here, but we also have our amazing technical team from the US with us today, Mr. Eric Gilson and Mr. Andrew Pang from Vastic, who will be explaining the technical part later today. We're very excited to host this event uh, in collaboration with GCS International for the third time. We are donating some of the proceeds coming from the entry fees of this event to support rehabilitation centers in Bhutan through Goodwill Cooperation Service and WT Cares programs. They will also receive 40 Dubox from us and our main sponsor, Quan. As you probably know, at our event, you can compete in four different events, recognized Pumse, freestyle Pumse, para Pumse, and beach Pumse. And we are currently at 866 registrations from over 50 countries from all over the world and our registration is still open. We are very overwhelmed by the big interest in our event and we would like to take the opportunity to thank all the athletes, referees, coaches and parents for supporting our event. So today we're going to go through all the technical things of the championships and please feel free to comment on our section on the live chat on Facebook if you have any questions regarding the technical requirements. And now I would like to give the floor to our technical team, Vastik. Oh, thank you, Lisa. So I'm gonna start by sharing my screen and giving a presentation on how this, on what we'll be doing during the event. So first off, let's take a look at the timeline for the recognized portion of the competition. <laughs> This is the portion that is coming up um, first. Um, we have yesterday we posted all of the black belt Pumse draws. Um, you can find those on Marshall events. Tomorrow evening um, is the registration deadline at 2359 GMT plus one time. So that's the Central European time zone. By also at that time, we'll be posting um, all of the athlete lists by division. We ask that all coaches verify their athlete lists um, by the 5th so that when uploading starts, there won't be any issues. From February 6th through the 11th, that will be the upload period. Later in the presentation, my colleague Andrew will explain how the uploading process works. Finally, on um, February 10th, all payments for the recognized portion of the competition are due. And the competition will be held on the 13th and 14th, and then the 20th and 21st of February, with the 13th and 14th being mostly the preliminary rounds, and the 20th being mostly semifinals, and the 21st being mostly final rounds. The timeline for the beach, para, and freestyle, um, which happens later in February, the registration deadline is still over two weeks away on the 17th of February. Again, we have um, a, a time period for the athlete list to be verified, which it'll be posted on the 17th and we'll need it verified by the 18th by the coaches. On the 19th, we'll publish the Pumse draw for the pair of divisions that require a Pumse draw. And finally, we'll have our upload period um, between the 20th and 25th of February with competition for beach, pair, and freestyle happening on the 27th and the 28th. So now that we've finished the timeline, I'm going to pass it back on over to Miss Lisa to go over some of the details of the event organization. Thank you, Mr. Eric. So I'm going to go through the general rules of the competition. And um, jury is not allowed during the competition. So please make sure to check if your athlete is wearing any jewelry. Please make sure that there is no jewelry while competing. 
athletes are not allowed to uh, athletes are allowed to wear footwear and socks outside however if the foot position cannot be evaluated by the referees they are allowed to do a deduction so you can wear shoes or socks but your foot position has to be very clear sports injury or medical bandages are allowed during the competition and during the beach competition you may wear your belt if you feel like it you can also read more about what you can wear during the uh, beach competition in our information package next slide please and i'm going to tell a little bit about our belt grade policy because we have so many athletes from all over the world, we are facing many different types of um, belt and cup grade systems and interpretation. Um, so therefore we're using the cup grade registration information provided by the athletes because of the different interpretations of the color belt related to the cup grade. And now, I would like to give the floor to our referee chairman, Ms. Adina Lenz. Thank you very much, Lisa. So I'm gonna go through the disqualifications rules to start with. Okay, so the first one is contestant competing in the wrong division will be disqualified. Videos that have been edited or show proof of editing. Contestant that have registered without submitting their videos in time videos containing political, social, or religious propaganda, videos containing non-recognized IOC flags, so please do check your flags in your dojang, and videos containing profanity or indecent images or gestures. Next one, please. Okay, so freestyle pumpsy not performed on mats, outdoors, or indoors. That's disqualification as well or beach freestyle pumpsy not performed on sand. <clears throat> beach pumpsy not performed on sand or beach freestyle pumpsy not performed on sand, excuse me. Contestants who submitted videos used in other competitions or same videos used several times in free choice pumpsy rounds. So you have to make a new video each time if you do the same pumpsy. Videos with music during performance, excluding freestyle, of course. Freestyle video submissions that do not meet the 1080p at 60 frames per, per second video recording requirements. Freestyle videos that do not meet the duration requirements of a freestyle performance from 90 to 100 seconds. And next one, please. Thank you. And then we have some deductions. We um, do, we give a minimum score if the quality of the video is so poor that we are unable to judge. So that would be 1.5 for presentation and 0.0, .0 for accuracy. Um, and if the contestant is performing a wrong pumpsy, the contestant will receive the minimum score of 1.5 per pumpsy as well. And then we have a major deduction for um, every time that the any part of the contestant's body is out of the video frame. So that would be 0 0.3 deduction for each movement. Thank and you. I'm, thank you, Ms. Adina. And I'm going to continue with the Pumse selection. So we have already posted the draws for the recognized Pumse. They are available on the Lens Taekwondo Facebook and Instagram pages. And you can also download it as a PDF file on the Marshall Events website. Um, when the registration for the Para Pumse closes on uh, the 17th of February, we're going to post the draws for the Para Pumse for Para P10 sports class and Para P30 sports class. And all of our um, color belt divisions are free of choice, but please check the information package. You can see depending on the division and age group and belt, you have to choose the pumsays you can perform. And you're not required to declare which pumsay for each round. You can choose a pumsay, you can record it, and then 
uh, you can upload it to our server on Vastic. And um, the competition will use whatever video is uploaded for that round. Thank you. And now I'd like to give the floor, I think it's Andrew, who will be talking about the video uploading. Okay, hello everyone. So the first thing that's gonna happen is right after registration's closed and when the uploading period opens, you're gonna need to check your email for an email from Marshall Events with your unique link that will direct you onto where to upload your video. Every entry will have their own unique links. So make sure if you are registered for multiple events that it is the correct link you're uploading for. Uh, you may need to check your junk email for that email from Marshall Events. Everyone will receive an email to the email they registered on using Marshall Events. The next step is that once you open the link, you will be able to uh, verify that is the correct person at the top, and then also show that it's the right name and division. Once you verify all that information, you're going to be able to record and upload one of your videos for each of the Pumse upload locations. Each uh, round will only be shown for based upon the number of people in your division. So if there are 20 people in your division, then you will have to upload six videos. If they are, if there are only uh, up to 20 people, but more than eight, you will only have to upload four. And if it starts in finals round, which is eight or less, you only have to upload two. Uh, each video once processed will have an automatic checker, which will tell you whether you have passed or failed the video requirements for that round. If it is red after you have uploaded your video, that means you have failed. If it is green, that means you've passed. So once the video has finished transcoding or processing, it will be playable back and you will be able to uh, watch your video. The system will automatically email you saying that it has finished processing and it will be sent from a vastic.com email. So make sure you also check your junk email for that email address. I will now demonstrate uh, all this entire process through my screen share. Okay, so everyone should be able to see my screen right now. And as you can see, So this is the final round, and this is the first Pumse. So I will upload my first Pumse. 
And as you can see, it is uploading. It will automatically show your picture of the correct Kumse. And as you can see, this one meets the video orientation, frame rate, resolution, duration, and requirements. <clears throat> While it is processing, you please just wait. You can upload multiple files at the same time. As you can see, both will upload at the same time. You can also replace a video as you see fit. If for say you upload the wrong video and you see it's the wrong video, go ahead and replace it. A new one will upload. And while this one's uploading, I'll upload my semi-final video. As you can see, this one does not meet the video frame rate requirements, and it's saying that the uh, the frame rate the resolution is too low, which means that generally when you have a red message like this, you have to re-record your video in the correct directions. You can find the directions on how to record properly at the bottom of the screen for your respective devices. So once I have re-recorded. I will replace the video. And as you can see, the video has been replaced. New picture, it's loading now, and this new video meets the frame rate requirements. Uh, once the video has finished loading, you will be able to play it back. Uh, it may take a little while for the video to finish loading because there are a lot of people uploading. Uh, please be patient, but you will receive an email when it's finished loading. And in the meantime, We will come back to this after I pass it back to Eric, and I will show you what it looks like when it has finished loading. Thank you, Andrew. So I'm now going to talk a little bit about um, the video recording requirements, and then we'll take a look at um, the upload process once we've finished processing the videos. So please ensure that you're following the instructions of your local and national health authorities with regards to social distancing and outdoor excursions. We know that every place is different with regard to what's going on right now. So please make sure you're staying safe and staying healthy. In terms of the actual video requirements, we strongly recommend that you record at least at 720p with 30 frames per second. High quality videos tend to be the 1080p at 60 frames per second. And this is actually the requirement for freestyle. So for all of the other divisions, recognize beach and para, you can record at any frame rate and resolution, whereas freestyle, it needs to be the high quality 1080p 60 frames per second videos. When you're recording, please ensure that the athlete stays 100% full body inside the video at all times. Remember, there is a deduction for every time a part of the body leaves the frame. The athlete needs to be facing the video um, at the start of the recording. The camera should be stationary and can be rotated, um, but sh its position shouldn't move. You are allowed to zoom in and out during the performance. 
but please keep in mind that the athlete should remain in frame at all times. The video recording can start immediately after Chiet Kunye. Walking in and out is not necessary um, for, as part of the recording. Please do not edit the videos or include anything additional at the beginning. It's not necessary to have your name, add a flag, or any other graphics to the video. All of that is added by the event at the start of your video. Recordings must be done in landscape mode. Portrait mode is not allowed, and your video will fail the check if you film in portrait mode. Again, remember, please only have IOC recognized flags. Athletes who show any political, religious, or non-recognized flags will be disqualified. So please see um, the documentation for recording the videos. Um, there's a full, full links will be included when the um, video upload server sends out its information. So at this point, Andrew, are you ready to share your screen once more before we I jump am. to questions? Yes, I am. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna hand it back over to Andrew so we can finish up showing the upload process. Um, Mr. Eric, I'm sorry to interrupt. Somebody yes, is saying on Facebook that the sound is gone. I'm not sure if I... it's a problem still there or can we check it somehow? I... I can hear on Facebook the sound is still there. Uh, okay. I think when Andrew first started, there was a little bit of a sound glitch, but that's been resolved. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so oh, actually I shared the wrong screen. As you can see, once the video has finished processing, you'll get an email from Vastic. It'll look something similar to this, and it will tell you that your video has finished processing, when the deadline is, if you need to replace it, how to also re-record, and which video it was. Uh, so you may receive a bunch of these emails. Please make sure you check all of them as it could be spent, sent to spam. And now I... Once you click on those links, it brings you back to your page. And as you can see, the video is now playable and it still has the requirements it's passed and that your video at this point has not been watched, which means you haven't reviewed your video. Please, if you can review your video, once you have finished reviewing it, it will say that you have watched it and that you finished reviewing each video. If you would still like to replace it, you can select a new file and replace your video again. It will then proceed to go through the processing all over again, in which case you need to be patient again. Please make sure you upload for each of the boxes shown for every category. And now with that, I will hand it back over to Ms. Lisa for any questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Andrew, for your presentation. And uh, Mr. Eric, um, so we're going to look through some questions on Facebook. If you have any technical questions, please feel free to write them in the chat right now so we can reply to them. We have um, one question here. I think Ms. Adina um, would like to answer this one. So if you have free choice of four pumses, do you have to record six videos of those forms? So multiple videos for the same form, or can you use the same video? That's right, you, you have to record a new video each time, even though you're performing the same pumse. So that is absolutely right. Okay, so we have free of choice in the beach pumse competition and color belt competition. So. It's very important that you remember to record a new video. Yeah. So let's see if we have any more questions. Mm. It looks like we don't have so many questions at the moment. 
Um, so I'm thinking it could be a good idea to go through some of the most important things. I can mention a few things. Um, and then maybe some of you can can add something. And in the meantime, uh, we can give a couple of minutes for people to ask some more questions if they feel like it. So what we talked about is that um, it's important that freestyle is performed on mats and no spring floors are allowed because we experienced at our last event at some that some athletes use spring floors and unfortunately that's a disqualification so please make sure that it's traditional taekwondo mats okay so and recognize pomsa can be performed anywhere so indoors or outdoors beach pomsa can only be, be performed on sand so please make sure that the you have sa uh, sand if you are competing in beach pomsa and um I think it's important that you make sure to check that your athlete is registered in the correct division to make sure that you won't be disqualified. So please do that. And um, yeah, do we have any other recommendations we can give to, to our athletes? Do any of you have anything else we can add? I think we've gone over the, the high points at this point, Lisa. Um, okay. I mean, I, I think really the big thing is what Andrew covered, um, both in terms of following the video recording procedure and then making sure you um, follow the upload procedure and check to make sure your videos meet all requirements because th th that I think is the one place where we get unintentional disqualifications. So it, make sure for the athletes and coaches, make sure you check all that and review it ahead of time. Um, uploading at the very last minute results in long wait time. So do it early so you can check it. <laughs> yes, I was about to say the same thing that waiting for the last uh, second to upload is a very bad idea because if your video is not being accepted by the system, you will not have extra time to record a new video. So please um, make sure to film your videos as soon as possible and upload them whenever it's possible from our side. So we can make sure that you will be in the competition. So I'm just going to check the questions the last uh, time. May I take some? Yes, of course, please. Uh, I just want ev everyone to know that earlier you upload, the faster you will find out when or if you need to replace your video or if it's good. And make sure you scroll all the way down because it could only be showing one or two videos on your mobile device or your laptop. And you need to make sure you scroll all the way down and make sure you upload all the videos required. Thank you, Mr. Andrew. Okay, um, I think it's a question from Ms. Edina. How yes. many, how many mm -hmm. seconds should a freestyle performance be? Yes, it should be between 90 to 100 seconds. Okay. And also, I would like to add something because sometimes people are asking if it's allowed to use support, either use uh, people or objects, and it is it is not allowed. Please do not use support. Hmm. For, for the freestyle videos, uh, one of the checks will also check for the time, and it will tell you if your duration is too short. Okay, that's great. So we have another question. Um, can the videos be recorded the same? The videos can be recorded the same day, correct? Yes, I, I can answer that. The videos can be recorded the same way, they, uh, the same day, but they can also be recorded uh, during two or three days. It's completely up to you. Okay. And I think it's a technical question. It says, hello, uh, Mr. Andrew. When participants receive their email with the link to upload their videos, do they have to log in to Vestic or will the link take participants into the upload portal directly? Uh, once you click on the link, it will take you directly to your unique upload portal. There is no need to sign in. Okay, great. Thank you for that answer. And we have one more. Um, Ms. Maria is asking, how do you verify the participants list? 
Good question. So what will happen is once registration closes tomorrow at midnight, we'll publish a list of all the participants in all the divisions. And what you want to do is make sure that the athletes are in the division they're supposed to be registered for. So this is effectively the, the last check before all the upload starts and the divisions are finalized. So that'll happen, to, that list will be posted after um, midnight um, tomorrow, um, GMT plus one, which is Central European time. I wanna point out that is not the competition order and that is just the list of participants. Okay. It looks like for now, we do not have more questions. Is there anything else someone from the team wants to add? I think I have a small thing um, regarding the recording. Please do not record too far away. Um, the athlete has to stay in the frame all the time, but it's sometimes we experience that uh, some coaches or athletes are filming way too far and it makes it very difficult for the referees to, to see everything. So if you have someone who is helping you to record, please make sure to have the person in the frame, but not go too close or too far. Um, but it can be challenging for the referees if you are standing way too far away to see all of the details. So that's a, a minor thing from me. Do we have anything else or can we uh, finish the meeting for now? I think we've covered everything that I would like to at the moment, Lisa, thank you. Okay, that's perfect. So. I would like to thank our referee chairman, Ms. Edina Lenz, for, for her inputs today and uh, our technical team, Vastic, Mr. Eric Gilson and Mr. Andrew Pang for all of their hard work. And uh, we are looking very much forward to welcome everyone to our event, which will take off next in, in two weeks, sorry, not next weekend. And um, the registration for Recognize Pumse is still open for until tomorrow midnight European time. So you can still join us and the uh, beach freestyle and um, Parapomse is open for a couple of more weeks. So please join us if you want to and um, stay well and safe and active. And we are very excited to welcome you soon. Thank you very much for your support and uh, greetings from Denmark and the US <laughs> to everyone. Thank you very much and uh, good night. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone.